Welcome back to STL Live. I'm Sarah Bernard and joining us from the Missouri Department of Conservation is community forester Mark Ruber. Mark, welcome back to STL Thank Live. You. We like when you come because you give us lots of good information, but you've got some bad news for us today. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm going to talk a little bit about gloom and doom on a couple of different trees but today. But it's important that we know the, what, what gloom and doom to look out for. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah, we're just trying to inform people of both of these problems so they can make some educated decisions on whether or not to treat their trees or if they have this problem or, or where to go. So what are we seeing in the St. Louis area? Okay, the first one I uh, probably should mention is, is dogwood anthracnose. I know we've got a picture, a couple pictures of that that may come up here. Um, that one uh, came in originally into the Kirkwood area and it's a fungal disease that gets on flowering dogwood, which is our state tree, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, it probably was introduced from another country. We don't know that for sure, but its origins don't seem to be from the U.S. And it starts to affect the leaves. It'll cause these brown kind of splotches in the middle of the leaf. And then eventually the whole leaf will die. Unfortunately, then it moves into the twigs and then into the stem, and the whole tree can eventually die from this disease. So, Is there any way to stop it before it gets too late? There is. There are some fungicides that can be applied. Mm -hmm. Typically in the springtime is the best time to do that. If folks are interested in finding out specifically what those are, they can just type in dogwood anthracnose to their favorite search engine, or they can contact the conservation department when we can give them more specifics on that. But um, you want to make sure that your tree's not too far along, though. So it's actually best maybe to consult an ISA certified arborist mm -hmm. to have them come out and take a look at the tree and kind of evaluate it, let you know whether it's, it's still worthwhile to go ahead and treat or it might be too far gone. Okay, so that's what's happening with the dogwoods. What Correct. else have you got? Uh, also have emerald ash borer. That's one, that one's more of a concern to city residents, unfortunately. We have a positive find up near the Calvary Cemetery area up in North City. Um, and basically what happens is you might be able to see these tiny little holes. There's one circled in red okay. right there. This small green insect drills into the tree and then it, it, it feeds on the tissue that moves water and nutrients back and forth in the mm -hmm. tree. Uh, and so it essentially starves the tree of, of those elements and, and the ash tree will die fairly quickly. The big problem with this one, again, it's an insect from another country, so it has no natural predators here. So once it gets into an area, about five to seven years after it enters into the area, all the ash trees in the area are dead. Mm. So unless you treat. So it's, uh, it's time if you have an ash tree in your yard and you live in the city, you want to start thinking about whether or not you want to treat. There are some do-it-yourself products out there, but there's also some if your ash tree's too big where you'll have to have a professional come in and provide So you treatment. can pre-treat for this problem? It, it's not really a pre-treatment. Um, the insect will actually still invade the tree, but it gets in contact with the chemical and that, qu that kills it before it has a chance to do any damage. Okay. So it doesn't prevent it technically, mm -hmm. um, but it does do an excellent job of controlling it. So long before you see these signs of the insects, you can go ahead and treat the tree. Correct, yeah. It, it, now that we know that it's in the city, now's the time to start start treating. Yeah, and you brought um, one of the little bugs, and I, I it's too tiny um, to see on the camera. I'm just gonna hold this little penny. Sure. So it's about the size of a penny, yeah. the, the length of it, this little green bug. They're pretty distinct and easy to see. They are, yeah, they're, they're, they're fairly good flyers. They're usually out in May, June, and July, so you won't see them now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they're so tiny um, that you might just catch a flash of green, but they, they kind of hide in your tree. Mm -hmm. You almost won't notice anything for the first year or two that they're in there, and then all of a sudden your ash tree will start to die back. You'll see dead branches up in the top, and that's a you know, fairly good indication that the ash tree's got some problems. So if you if you see any green anything <laughs> crawling <Yes>. around, <laughs> it might be too late. But <laughs> well, it's best if your tree still looks healthy. You know, again, you might consider doing some treatments. There's it's expensive, so yeah. you have to decide if it's worth it or not. Yeah, too. yeah. So anything else that we need to be as we go into fall? Mm -hmm. um, anything else that we need to be? Well, those are the about? yeah. Those are the big two insect and disease things. Um, one of the best health treatments you can do for your tree is put mulch down. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't think about that, but if you think about where trees grow in the woods, the leaves and decaying twigs and things like that on the forest floor is really mulch. So mm -hmm. mulching your tree is one of the best health treatments you can do. And that, that will help you against both of these problems. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not perfect, 
but a healthy tree, like a healthy person, is more resistant to insect and disease problems. Interesting. Well, very good. Well, Mark, thank you so much for coming You're again welcome. and giving us great tips. Um, even if they're not, they're, it gives us scary things to think about. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's still good to be pre-warned. To learn more about Missouri Department of Conservation and how to be involved in other conservation activities, visit mdc.mo.gov. There's more STL Live after this. Stay with us.